content. Would we choose to not do that? Here's my thought on that is uncontacted tribes. Like, do you, you know about the, mm. the gentleman who was the uh, missionary who visited North Sentinel Island yeah. and was killed by the natives? North Sentinel Island, which is a really unusual place because they branched off from Africa 60,000 years ago and they've been living on this one small island the size of Manhattan. And as well as we know, there's only about 39 of them left somewhere around there. Yeah. And um, we can't, we're not supposed to contact them. Like people are not supposed, we're supposed to like leave them alone. And they're a, a rare tribe. When they find them in the Amazon, the uncontacted tribes, our initial instinct is back off, back off, yeah. leave them alone, leave them alone. Do you think that perhaps the universe, like if there is a civilization that's a million times more advanced than us and mm. been around here for you know millions of years of life as opposed to quarter million, why would they... Why would they let us know? Like, would they look at us dropping bombs on each other and polluting the ocean, sucking all the fish out and putting clouds into the skies of dirt and particles? And yeah. why would they like look at these crude monkeys? Look at that. They don't, they're so far beyond where they need to be before they could join the galactic civilization <laughs> network true. or whatever. It is true. It's, a, it's an argument that yeah. there is an argument as well that it, technology is so advanced would be difficult for us to detect. I mean, we tend to think of, you know, when you say written across the sky, I suppose it's true. I'm thinking of starships and things yes. like Star Wars, right? right? Big energy things that you can see the signature of. But actually, it may be that uh, the civilization just becomes a nano civilization, <laughs> you know, tiny yes. little nano, because that's more efficient. It's a better way to do things. So it's possible, I suppose, that there are space probes all over the place that are so small and are so efficient and use so little energy that we just don't see them. I suppose that is possible. My other thought is that where we are headed, it seems to me that there's some sort of a strange symbiosis that's taking place. There's a, there's a strange connection that we have to electronics and ultimately to an artificial creation, artificial intelligence, whatever you want to mm. call it, artificial light, life, something that's created by carbon-based beings, mm. cellular beings that isn't cellular, but mm. also acts like life, yeah. that this may be the future of life, that we are so connected to the idea of flesh and blood and bone, but maybe this is just a temporary situation until yeah. we transition, or if not us transition, till it surpasses us, and this is the next stage of life. But this stage has no need for all the human and biological reward systems that are in place that made sure that we survive, whether mm. it's ego or fear or emotions, no need for that, that it will just exist and maintain its equilibrium as this, this new form of life, yeah. and that this is the future of life in the universe, and that we'll get there, maybe it'll only be 100, 200 years from now, but mm. that, that that's what exists all throughout the cosmos. So there's no need to peacock. There's no need to show our, our, our signal yeah. in the sky and that it just exists in this form. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> yeah. either. Yeah, so that's the, that's the counter argument to the, this Fermi paradox argument that I talked about. Well, exactly as you've just said, that basically you, you evolve to a point very rapidly where you just don't create a signature. Yes. And you don't really get involved, as you said. Maybe it just maybe maintains. You just <laughs> Like, well, it has no, yeah. it, well, there's no motivation, right? Like, it doesn't, yeah. our motivations are so weird, right? We have these biological motivations to survive and, to, you know, there's motivations to conquer and to innovate and to spread our genes and to move into new territories. But if you didn't have biology, if you were, you existed com completely from man-made materials or, or from mm -hmm. materials found on earth and that this new form of life was created out of that, it wouldn't have those unless you program them. And why would you do that? It is interesting, isn't it? Because to, to, we don't know what consciousness is. Right. right? So it's, a, it's often called a hard problem in science. We don't know. So it's a good question whether you can build, let's say you want to build a self-replicating machine, which is what you're talking about, and something that can go and maybe go to the moon or Mars and replicate itself and then carry on, which is a living thing, I suppose. Yes. Does it have to have a sufficient level of intelligence that it actually is conscious and all these things that we talked about this this word meaning that we used earlier that we all understand yeah. but can't define is that a emergent property that that has to emerge if you've got something that's intelligent enough to 
replicate itself and live and, right. as you said, be the... I, I don't know the answer, but it's worth considering that this thing, this what we emotion, meaning, love and fear and all those things are just the things that happen. 